Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Donington Park and the second race, the eighth round of the 2019 Mini Challenge. The JCW class cars are very shortly going to be heading out onto the circuit, but we have got a short delay. There is a recovery process ongoing after what was a typically eventful VW Racing Cup event. Uh, a first lap shunt had left a couple of cars stricken the side of the road. As you can see, Simon Walton who was the proud owner of uh, an immaculately prepared Audi TT. Now he's the proud owner of a slightly bent one, but uh, the front wheel will be fixed. They'll be back out next round. Thankfully, the driver's all okay, but because of suspension damage and wheels missing and whatnot, the recovery process has taken a little longer than planned. Whilst the recovery process has been ongoing, it started to rain. The next grid of cars is a field of nearly 30 identical minis, all of which will no doubt be sat there in the assembly area on slick tyres. So we are I think in for rather a dramatic 20 minutes of mini challenge racing. So the green flag lap then gets underway. We'll have a chance in a moment to run you through this partially reversed grid, which, as I said, uh, is the top six finishers from race one reversed. Ben Palmer looking for his third win of the year, if possible, lines up on pole position with Lewis Brown alongside. Jack Mabin is third on the grid ahead of Dan Zelos, uh, fourth position. Then James Gornall the points leader, but now by only six points, we think, over Nathan Harrison in second, in uh, sixth on the grid, second in the championship. Rory Cuff just missed out on the grid reversal. Tom Rawlings, likewise, they will share the fourth row of the grid. And on row five, rounding out the top 10, Matthew Wilson and Harry Gooding, who will be hoping that his brakes stay in working order this weekend after a scary crash at Silverstone. Callum Musham and Dave Lukes are on the sixth row of the grid together. Row seven is shared by James Griffith and James McIntyre. Uh, then, all the J's together, James Luke, James Griffith, then Jacob Andrews and James McIntyre, and then Josh Stanton, 15th on the grid, uh, and uh, Neil Trotter there, 16th as well. Matthew Rainbow and Stuart Gibbs are next. Matt Rainbow has uh, progressed from Ginetta Racing, so from rear wheel drive to front wheel drive, he may have some difficulty getting rear tyre temperature up. Jacob Andrews and Lewis Gaylor are next. Lewis had a spin and collected another car at the hairpin, had to pit for four repairs in race one. Jack Davidson, we saw something fell off his car. He pulled off at the side of the road to retire. Richard Newman was a retirement in the previous race. Lee Patterson, likewise, we don't know exactly what the issue is. I'm guessing something brake related. Let's hope that's been sorted. Keenan Dole and Max Bird, both retirements. In fact, Max Bird didn't even start the first race he got as far as Redgate on the green flag lap and then was pushed back into the pit lane with problems so we've got some quick drivers coming from the back of the grid particularly looking at the likes of Jack Davidson Lee Patterson Keenan Dole and Max Bird in the pit lane confusion reigns now because right now yes it's damp but it's certainly not wet enough for wet tires if it rains even slightly harder though it may well be beneficial to come in and change onto wets but if you do that and then the rain stops it'll go back into the the, the comfort zone of those on slicks right now there is no right choice it's too wet ideally for the slicks to work at their optimum um, because it is a bit damp and cold out there but it's not wet enough for wet tires so what do you do it's a nightmare both for drivers and for crews because effectively either as a driver you ideally want it fully wet or fully dry if it's in between not only is it a nightmare for tires but also try to set the car up because it means that you know exactly which direction you need to go if it's either a full wet or a full dry circuit in between it's it, in, with, with tires with setup it's almost an absolute gamble you've got no exact concrete sort of way of how to set the car up properly we just saw the jam sport crew there with several sets of tires ready i'm sure that one car's probably going to change tires it's that man there harry goody because there was some orange rims on some of those tires possibly he could be coming in to make a change because there is some rain in the air. Several cars, as you can see, have got their windscreen wipers on, which means that possibly they're going to have to try and fend off as much of the rain as possible. But um, this is going to be pretty interesting, of course. We see even some drivers, if it does start to rain harder, if they start to make an early gamble and go on to wet tyres, watch for them in terms of their lap tyres, tearing their way through the field, whilst others, if they try and struggle out there to cope with dry tyres on an e increasingly um, dampening and, and, and dampening track, or possibly just going off and having to go in and make later stops when the others most benefit from taking that gamble early on. And the trouble is that you won't see any Formula One style two and three second pit stops either. It will take them a long time. They may even go a lap down. And that's why really you want to make the decision now rather than have to pit halfway through the race. At least if you pit now, there's a good chance you'll get out without losing a lap. If there's a safety car, you might be able to gain some of that ground back. You've sort of got what you've got now, I think, though, and I would imagine most of the field are going out there on slick tyres. There's a gap on the grid somewhere around the James Griffith area, I think. Callum Houston appears to be there. I'm not sure about James Griffith, number five. We'll pick up on that. Uh, I think they were out of position on the grid, weren't they? So a few drivers uh, a bit confused as to where they need to be lining up. Ben Palmer knew where he was going, though. Straight to pole position, and alongside him, Lewis Brown, the yellow and black machine, with Jack Mabin on the inside of row number two. Jack Mabin, who was a winner back at Alton Park, 
The only double victor in one weekend so far has been Pen Palmer last time out at Silverstone. Can Nathan Harrison do the double here? He'll have to do it from sixth on the grid. Let's find out then. The lights go out. Away we go. Round the race of the championship bursts into life. Good start made by Harrison. He's already alongside James Gordle there. Fifth and sixth positions running towards the first corner. But it will be Palmer that leads the way. Maybe not the inside of Lewis Brown for second position. And now we start to find out where the grip is. How much rear tyre temperatures do they have? Brown has a wiggle. He's out on the grass. They're three abreast, in fact, as they go down towards the grey and the curve. This could end in tears. Nathan Harrison on the inside is into second place already. Fantastic stuff that was. I think he's just about gathered it together. They're skating and sliding their way down the grade of curves. Ben Palmer's loving this. He's pulling away from everybody else. But what a start from Nathan Harrison. Second position. Supreme confidence there on cold tyres in sketchy conditions. James Gordon is sideways. And crucially here, Scott, Harrison's second. Gordon has gone backwards. And that will mean, because at going to weekend, there was about what the gap between was about six points in the gap. So Harrison's would actually may seem pick nine points back from his 15 point gap coming into the weekend. If he stays where he's effective, he can take even more points away. In fact, possibly James Gordon will fall back even further. He's dropped back towards the bottom of the top 10. Some more dramas for the championship leader, tumbling down towards the back of the top 10, now battling with Harry Gooding. But meanwhile, Ben Palmer leads the way, but Harrison taking full advantage here up into second place. They'll be thinking this is perfect. The more points he can take out of Gordon, the more pressure he'll be on for the remaining rounds going forward to the championship. And both Gordon and Harrison have had their drop score now, basically. Gordon not finished in race to a silver. Silverstone. Harrison was 23rd in race one after contact with this man, Ben Palmer, on the opening lap at Silverstone. And now Harrison trying to go around the outside to take the race lead away from Ben through the Melbourne hairpin. He's not quite going to get it, or is he? Has he got himself the inside line at Goddard's? He might just be there. Harrison up the inside from sixth on the grid in less than a lap has taken the race lead away from Ben Palmer. Yes, makes it stick at Goddard's. A phenomenal opening lap on cold tyres. And Nathan Harrison is determined not to be runner up in this championship again. He has never won the top level of the mini challenge he's won in the cooper class but in the top f56 category he always seems to fall on fall upon bad times and bad luck seems to take him out of the equation so harrison leads the way palmer second he lost third rawlings fourth and lewis brown down to fifth maven is sixth on the grass further back i think that's matthew wilson who very nearly collects uh, the uh, very lucky calibution on that occasion james cornell scott eighth position not as comfortable, you would have to assume, on these cold tyres. Yeah, some are getting very sideways to the middle of the, of the crater curves, but yeah, in cold tyres and what is an, an, an increasingly dropping track temperature, uh, it seems to really possibly leaving him on the back foot. But you have to say, dare I say the phrase, that was affecting Nathan Harrison's what? Ayrton N said a nice 93 European Grand Prix mode, but sixth to first in one lap on the Grand Prix circuit on what was effectively a slightly damp track. I think if you look at it back thinking, I did that, that was fantastic. That was incredible. Donington Park, you can, oh, two cars off in the background there. We'll pick up on those in a moment. Ron Richard Newman, I think. And the one bouncing its way back on. Didn't quite and catch Stanton, the number. Think, Josh possibly. Stanton, yeah, you're right, 99. Josh Stanton and Richard Newman, that would make sense. They were fighting over 19th place. Stanton continues, Newman doesn't. That might require a safety car. Another uh, one of the floppy markers goes for a bird, and that was uh, a headbutt there from Dan Zillis to go through. Newman's out of the car, thankfully. Looks like there was a bit of contact as off the road goes Stanson. Looks like there was a bit of contact on the left rear, I think, so maybe there was a bit of a tag between the pair of them. Josh Stanson pulls the car off to the inside, so it means he's way off the line, which shouldn't require a safety car. Meanwhile, Harrison continues to lead the way, but Ben Palmer under threat for second place from Dan Zillos as they come back into Goddard's hairpin. Rawlings is keeping touch in fourth place, is looking on, and in fifth position now also is Lewis Brown. But as we say, James Gordon is up another place now. He has managed to get past Cuff for seventh place there on the back of what is now Josh Mabian for sixth. And a good start also for Harry Gooding up to ninth place ahead of Callum Newsham, who rounds out the top ten. Three red gate corner, they go again. Then Tom Rawlings in fourth place, by the way, set to equal his best finish of the year so far from race two at Silverstone. That's Josh Stanton inspecting the damage. Now, how did he get it? Well, it looked at first viewing as if Newman lost it and Stanton had nowhere to go. Whether there was contact before that, I know not. Either way, the end result is that Newman's car is in the gravel and the safety car is being scrambled. Newman on the right there, the blue, red and white car locks up, loses the rear. And, well, Josh Stanton, really, there was nowhere he could go. He was innocent in all of that. Sadly, it takes them both out of the race. Yeah, the question to uh, what happened to him, did he jump or was he pushed? He jumped all by himself, and sadly, he brought Stanton with him. So, uh, safety car's been deployed as a result because, of course, Newman's car is in the gravel trap, but still in the position where if someone else was to hit stride, it's an unsafe place for somebody where they could clatter into it and cause further problems. So, I think smartly, the clerk of the course has managed to throw the safety car, which means after roughly four and a half minutes, it's a 20 minute race, we've still got plenty of time to get it recovered. And the fact that Marshall's have been so good at recovering the cars and recovering any trouble in quick succession 
position. We've seen most of the races today only in the safety car for roughly around a couple of laps before they get them underway again. So I would anticipate, in true fashion of our fantastic British marshals, we should get Newman's car recovered pretty quick, pretty swiftly with the recovery vehicles, get this race back underway. But what this also is, one person that mainly benefits is James Gorn, because of course he's back in seventh. It closes the field back up again, which means he now has a chance to properly start to attack. Mabin, Brown, Rawlings in front to get himself back into contention for a podium place. So there's hope for Gorn yet. Yeah, the race isn't over. It's only been roughly five minutes or so. He is back in seventh, yes, but there's plenty of time for him to redeem himself. But what is now, I think, a track that is starting to try and dry itself back out again, even though there are still spots of rain on our commentary box window. We're about to go racing again. Let's see who can go on the attack here. Who has kept the tyre temperature up? Who's kept the brake temperature up as well? That's also pivotal when you arrive at Redgate Corner. You want those brakes to work. If they're a bit cold, they can be a bit snappy. You might lock up and run out wide. These are all things Nathan Harrison will have dealt with in the past, though. Ben Palmer and Dan Zenos, slightly less experienced mini challenge races. The same for Tom Rawlings and uh, Lewis Brown, fourth and fifth. Indeed, most drivers out there are less experienced than Nathan Harrison. Away he goes anyway, and there you can see the gap between first and second is fractionally bigger than the gap between second and third, because Zelos can react to, Dan, uh, to Ben Palmer. It wasn't a bad restart for Palmer in second place, though, and he will be only a car length or so behind Nathan Harrison, as with just over eight and a half minutes to go, we get racing back of the way here at Donington Park, lap number six of the eighth round of the championship. Does anybody make a dive into Red Gate? Well, Harrison was quite conservative under braking. I think it might have started raining again slightly at that part of the circuit, and Harrison, he is the sacrificial lamb. He's the first one to arrive at every single corner. And if it has rained harder than it was raining last time they went through there, he's the first to find out. It's veterans, the unknown is the old hairpin. Let's turn the way through. The three of them already trying to break away at the front ahead of the battle of the fourth and fifth between Rawlings and Brown. Wong's a little uh, sideways and over the grass on the exit. This brings Brown into play. Wipers a blaze on the windscreen, which means it is starting to rain a little bit more as they come back down towards McLean's. And again, as you said, each corner now, as it is starting to rain a little bit further and further, it's basically a journey into the unknown in terms of their don't know what these conditions are like because last time they got into them it wasn't at racing speeds it was a reduced pace under a safety car up the inside goes brown Ooh. slightly out of control up the inside of the copy's corner but somehow just about got the car stopped on the apex is up to fourth place an impressive move but somehow possibly thought he wasn't going to get it stopped in time that was the definition of a block pass wasn't it he got to the <laughs> apex he threw out the anchor made sure he didn't run out wide it's a bit uh, unruly, maybe, but it is successful. James Gordon up the inside for sixth place, goes past Jack Mabin. That was a nice move on the break into the chicane, as Ben Palmer has Dan Zelos up the inside for second position. This is down towards the Melbourne hairpin. Dan Zelos looked racy just before the safety car came out. He's into second, and Harrison has not gone anywhere, so Dan Zelos might just be able to get this first victory of the season. But to do that, he has to overtake one of the most experienced drivers on the grid. Nathan Harrison will not roll over and let him go, especially if he's being told that uh, James Gordon is starting to make progress as well. There is Gordon, the uh, yellow and white car, just ahead of Jack Mabin at number seven. Across the start-finish line they go. Seven minutes of racing remaining. Can Dan Zelos do this? Maybe with the talking up, we did finally, first of all, it won't be a contest curse, it'll be a contest blessing this time. <laughs> so many times we say about someone's going to do a, good, do a good job and they fall off the road. Maybe, hopefully, this time for the first time ever, it could be the polar opposite. Uh, yes, well, we get in trouble so often for cursing people. It would be nice to be praised <laughs> for picking them up for once, wouldn't it? As I say, though, this is not going to be easy. Nathan Harrison will put up a, a severe fight here, I'm sure. Rain may be easing off now. They'll have built some tyre temperature up as well, so Nathan will no doubt be looking to try and use that confidence to extend the margin. Zeloff, remember, was third this morning and only 1.2 seconds off the race victory, such was the close nature of the, uh, the leading pack. Certainly seems to be a similar sort of story today, or uh, well, this afternoon, I should say. Towards the back of shot, James Gornall has now latched onto the tail of Tom Rawlings. There he goes. Sixth position, James Gornall led the points leader. He needs to try and make more ground up than this. Gornall's fastest lap at the moment is a 41.8, which would be about the third or fourth fastest lap, I think, as the conditions continue to improve. If they continue to improve, though, we should start to see, indeed, lots of purple sectors coming up again now on this, the first full flying lap after the safety car. Blue car there, Rory Cuff behind him, Callum Newsham and Harry Gooding still inside the top ten. As Ben Palmer defensively as Brown, and on the inside goes James Gordon for fifth position. Tom Rawlings really there was very little he could do there. Gordon was coming through. Yeah, fantastic pass. A little bit of a lock up as he's trying to get the car anchored up, but classy move there from the former British GT champion to get himself the move done. What's interesting here is that Zelos might possibly be the marker post for the cars behind because he might be possibly thinking rather than being, being, being with Palmer holding up Zelos in many cases, possibly this might be thinking, right, let me go and try and come with me so we can try and chase after because the more cars that are stacking up behind Harrison, the more pressure he's under, 
the more points you might get. Meanwhile, James Gordon, we said it might be important to get the fast snap of the race. He's done just that with a 141.005, fractions away from doing a sub-141, which would be a pretty impressive lap time, especially in these sort of mixed conditions here, when it's sort of half mostly dry, with a little bit of precipitation in the air and a little bit of saturation on the circuit. Another driver to keep an eye on if we ever dare take our eyes off the lead pack is Lee Patterson, the grey number 69 car, running in 14th position, just did the outright fastest final sector, and he has set a lap time that I reckon is the second fastest lap in the race, 1-1000 one, one quicker than Lewis Brown has gone. There is Lewis Brown, meanwhile, fourth on the road, attacking Ben Palmer for third position, but Lee Patterson from the back of the grid after that mysterious issue that took him out of the first race early doors is starting to trouble the back end of the top ten now. Account of Coppice goes this third place scrap. Lewis Brown looking strong here. Lewis's best finish so far has been a fifth. He's yet to have a podium in his mini challenge uh, JCW racing career. Can he do it now? Ben Palmer is the man that stands between him and that. What would be a fantastic result. I think James Gordon has got some tyre temperature now. He's found some commitment through the chicane, that's for sure. Used lots of curve, and he is catching these two. Can't blame him for it. Can't blame for not trying, can you? Because he's up the inside for uh, that's Jack Maven defending at the passing, actually. Rawlings for sixth position. So a clean move up the inside, a la Gorner that did on him a couple of laps ago. So certainly taking inspiration, thinking, right, anything he can do, I can try and do it better. Ooh. Up the inside for third. Great opportunity <laughs> pass for Lewis Brown. And parks it straight on the air. Picked it up. It's a great move on Ben Palmer. Caught him completely off guard. Think, right, if you're going to sit in the middle of the track, bang, up the inside line, up to third place. Ben won't like that. He'll try and get him back past the next few corners. But a cracking move. And he's going to try back up the inside again. He must be listening to me in the comedy box. Diving up the inside. But he may be too deep, or he might not be. Palmer parks up the airbags and thinks, if you're going to park it there, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Side by side down the crane of curves, and look who it's bringing back into play. James Gornall will throw himself into the mix. He could go for third to fifth here if he plays his cards right, Andy. Yeah, Ben Palmer's all out of shape on the dirty side of the road through the crane of curves, but that was some fantastic racing. The last of the late breakers there for Lewis Brown into the head, and then Ben Palmer through Redgate. Palmer might have made the corner, actually, if he hadn't had that headbutt from Palmer. Either way, Brown has managed to, uh, to go through and uh, he is into third position then. Palmer for Gordel with them, but so too Jack Mabin and Tom Rawlings. It's letting the top two rather check out. And on the previous lap, Zelos was fractionally quicker than Nathan Harrison, so we may yet have a fight for the lead on our hands. For the podium place, though, for the bottom podium place, it is any one of five drivers. They make their way down the exhibition straight, two and a half minutes to go. Maybe, by the way, Scott has set the new fastest lap of the race, so we are definitely seeing conditions improve here. Yeah, there was a sub 141 lap time, 140.979, so he managed to do what James Gould couldn't on the previous lap. But Lewis Brown really is almost the clock in the bottom. He's up the inside now for fourth place goes James Gould. He managed to find his way through. He locks up, and this may also open the door up for Jack Maven to make his way through. Palmer runs wide on the exit. Maven says, thank you very much. I'll take that. But he's on the outside line for the next corner, which may not be to his benefit. As Gornal parks the car in the middle of the road to try and defend from either Palmer or Mabin. Tucked in behind Lewis Brown as they turn their way through. Palmer goes back up the outside and says, not quite this time, Josh. He comes back on the exit through Goddard's. But the top two trying to break away. We've got less than two minutes to go. Zelos was matching. His last up time was a fraction slower than Harrison. So the gap is pretty stationary at this point in time. But Gornal now wants to try and get himself back into a third place position to try and minimise that deficit of points, which he's going to lose to Harrison. His main task now, he can't catch the top two. He has to get past Brown to try and nullify the points advantage that Harrison has if he's got any chance of trying to hold on to the lead. Although getting sideways through the middle of the crane of curves is not the tactic he wants to try and employ. If he finishes third and Harrison wins, he will lose 10 points to Nathan Harrison before you add in the fastest laps. But Gornall's fastest lap is still quicker than Harrison's. Jack Mabin, the only man I think that's been into the 1 minute 40 now, 1 minute 40.979. He's on course for the six bonus points for fastest lap. But Gornall, by my reckoning, would take five bonus points. Harrison, maybe only two or three. So uh, you're looking at a net gain at the moment for Harrison of about seven or eight points, and he's six points behind. What is pivotal for Nathan is that Dan Zelos doesn't get past him and take the race lead away, because that could really change things. And on this lap, Zelos has set a personal best in the first sector and the middle sector. In the middle sector, he was 1 1,000th of a second faster than the race leader, but the gap is creeping down. Down the hill they come, the green car of Dan Zelos looking for his first ever win, applying the pressure there to Harrison. Meanwhile, it's two yellow cars side by side for third, and James Gornall taking a risk there by going to the outside of the Melbourne hairpin. Yes, he wants this third place, but he cannot afford contact that could lead to a second on finish. I think I saw his tactic that he was trying to get to the outside line to get himself on the inside for the next corner, but Lewis was wise to that and just covered that inside line and gave him just enough uh, enough of a squeeze to force him to back out of that move as we head on to the last lap of the 
the race. But look at all this battling here. It's still bringing in the likes of Palmer, maybe Rawlings in the mix. Dan Zilos, no more crucial, set the fastest lap of the race a tenth quicker than Harris, who set his personal best when come back into Redgate for the final time. Brown is literally hanging on for dear life for this third place, but Gore, the experience as he is, will keep on putting the pressure on all the way through this final tour of the Grand Prix loop to try and snatch the third place away. The question is, Andy, how bad does he want it, or how calculated does he want to be to sit and take the fourth place and possibly try and gain the points back later on? It's a difficult decision to make with half a lap to go. Windscreen wipers on for Lewis Brown as well. Now, whether he's flicked them on in excitement or because there are a few more spots of rain falling, I'm not too sure. At the pit straight, I don't think it's raining, but at the far end of the track, it may be a different story. The rear of Lewis Brown's car certainly does not look particularly well balanced. Again, is that because of his exuberance trying to keep Gordel at bay or because of some slightly more slippery conditions? In the first sector on this lap, the lead gap is coming down by another tenth, but all eyes really on the fight for third place. Lewis Brown doing everything he can to hang on to take his first podium finish. James Gordel really could do with getting past, though. He needs these championship points. Yeah, I think Lewis Brown is the only driver with uh, windscreen wipers on, so uh, I think maybe he's caught the switch whilst he was saving one of the many sideways moments he's had over the last lap and a half. The leading two, though, down to Melbourne hairpin. Half a second in, it's at the line. Zelos throwing everything at this. What about for third place? It's still Lewis Brown hanging on. We may see Rory Cuff getting past Tom Rawlings in the background. He's up the inside in the blue car. But that will give him the outside line for the final corner. Into the final corner, then, come the top two. And Nathan Harrison is going to do exactly what Ben Palmer did at Silverstone last time out, winning two races in the same weekend. He gets his first win this morning. And like buses, the second one is not far behind. A brilliant double race victory for Nathan Harrison. Second is Zelos. Third is Brown. Just about fends off James Gordon in fourth. Ben Palmer fifth. Jack Mabin sixth. Then Tom Rawlings, Rory Cuff, Callum Newsham. And Lee Patterson just got into the top ten, I think, on the final lap at the expense of Harry Gooding. A really good drive that, as you'd expect from the hugely experienced uh, front-wheel drive tip-top racer Lee Patterson from the back of the grid gets into the top ten. Well, a sublime drive that from Nathan Harrison. He was in many ways the star of the show at Silverstone because after having that 23rd place finish in race one. He came through from the 23rd place on the grid to finish second in race two at Silverstone and very nearly won it. Here today, he stayed out of trouble. He's kept good track position and he was impossible to beat. He's had two very controlled and very professional and two very mature drives today. So I think certainly if he carries exactly as he is in this season, of course, James Gordon will, will ha can't afford to have many more sort of slightly off days than he had this weekend. Of course, he got second in race one earlier on this, this morning, and of course, then it was fourth in the second race. If he keeps on falling back and allowing Harrison to keep on racking up these wins, Harrison keeps on this consistent form. Really, he's got to be the main favourite for the championship. And now James Gordon has got to try and find as much pace as he can with the next few rounds coming up at Browns Hatch. Donaldson Park back here once again, and then Sness in October. He's got to do as much as he can now to try and stop Harrison from getting these perfect weekends. Nathan Harrison then your double race winner here at Donington and takes the championship lead, provisionally at least. Dan Zilos is second, Lewis Brown is third. James Gordon loses the points lead, but won't be far behind as we head to the next round of the championship at Brands Hatch. Then it's Ben Palmer fifth, Jack Mabin sixth, Tom, Rawling, Ro Tom Rawlings, Rory Cuff and Callum Newsham with Lee Patterson getting into the top ten. Then Harry Gooding, James Luke, Jack Davidson, Matthew Wilson and James McIntyre to round out the top 15. Next, the championship heads to Brands Hatch, first on the Indy, then the Grand Prix circuit. Who will come out on top there?